know, I remember as kids saying, ding darling, ding darling. It's a name that, that resonated as a source of creativity and ideas. It's kind of a musical name. Ding's real name was Jay Norwood Darling. Ding was his nickname. He was one of the most famous editorial cartoonists of his time, and his work was seen in newspapers across the country. He was a man with many talents and interests as you will see, and he became one of our great pioneering conservationists. Ding's grandson is Kip Koss. Kip was really close to his grandfather. I've heard Grandpa Kip tell stories about Ding ever since I can remember, and I almost feel like I knew Ding. Ding Darling was my grandfather. I grew up living next door to him, and I knew him uh, until his death. I was 27 years old when he died. He was a wonderful grandfather. I uh, learned many things from him. It was as I grew older that I began to uh, appreciate better what an extraordinary man my grandfather was. Ding went to college with the plan of going into medicine. He enrolled at Beloit College in Wisconsin, where he fit right in. He was head of the glee club, manager of the track team, managing editor of the college paper, and made a decent income as a singer, mandolin, and accordion player. This is his accordion. In short, he did everything except study. But Ding had a great time, until his artistic talent landed him in some trouble. He had already started to sketch when he went to college. And uh, he drew sketches of the faculty, which were not always too complimentary to the faculty. And uh, they reached the end of their tolerance when he drew all the members of the faculty, including the president of the university, in tutus and little ballerina outfits in a chorus line. And they said, uh, <laughs> they said, that's enough of that, darling, and out you go. Darling in later years said, well, he said, you know, the fact of the matter is I was a lousy student, so you take your choice on that. I guess cartoonists are a little bit of troublemakers. I guess that's one of our biggest uh, downfalls. Uh, I'd always found out that, that drawing teachers was the worst thing you could possibly do, and I think he found out the same thing when he was at Beloit College. But uh, yet cartoonists, for the most part, have been rabble-rousers. And that's what we're really supposed to be doing. After spending a year traveling around the country, doing odd jobs, being a farmhand, musician, and a reporter, Ding went back to college and graduated in 1900. Then, he returned to his hometown, Sioux City, and landed a job as a cub reporter for the Sioux City Journal, thinking he would save money for medical school. But a different career was in store for him. He got a job as a uh, reporter for the local newspaper. One of his first assignments was to uh, go cover a trial of a famous citizen, a well-known citizen in, in Sioux City. Being a good young reporter, he took his camera along to not only record a, a picture and, and, and the company the article. When the uh, well-known person saw the camera come up, he just went berserk. And he chased after Darling with his waving his cane and threatening Darling, and Darling didn't get his picture. He goes back and he draws a picture of this fellow, menacing with the cane. And it was quite a hit in the newspaper, uh, but it, not a hit with the, the gentleman whose picture was drawn. And uh, Darling got his start as an illustrator in the Sioux City Journal, which quickly went into a series of being editorial cartoons. It would recognize very quickly what the talent he was. Now, he was drawing not only irate uh, local citizens, but he was drawing politicians, 
presidents, uh, subjects of discussion in the current day. And from that time on, I was completely immersed in the exciting environment of newspaper illustrations and cartoons. So it was that I became a cartoonist by accident of circumstances and not by design. After working at the Sioux City Journal for a few years, Ding took a new job at the Des Moines Register. His cartoons were front, top, and center every day, like here in this 1940s Des Moines Register. And not just in that paper. His cartoons were syndicated and appeared in more than 100 newspapers across the country. He started drawing in the early 1900s, way before radio and television, to the late 1940s. So newspapers were really the major source of news and information for people, and they loved Ding's cartoons. He even won the Pulitzer Prize, twice, once in 1924 and again in 1943. The main paper in, in uh, Iowa was the Des Moines Register, and the uh, owner and editor, S. Darling, gave him a job offer. So he packed up his wife, and off they went to Des Moines, where he started a very, uh, very fine career. The publisher at the time, Gardner Coles, told him that he had complete freedom, complete editorial freedom. The newspaper was fairly liberal at the time, and it still is. And uh, he was told that he could do and draw whatever he wanted to. Now, most cartoonists, if not almost all of them, uh, don't have that freedom. I think that was kind of a, an agreement that they'd made because politically, uh, Ding Darling was, was very much a conservative uh, Republican cartoonist, or his philosophy was very conservative, especially in fiscal areas. Darling had a good sense of humor. In fact, in later years, he would attribute his success in editorial cartooning to with the ability to express difficult ideas with a, and difficult lessons, uh, to coat them with a little bit of humor. And he felt you could get a message through to people as long as you put a little sugar coating around the, the hard part of it. Uh, Ding Darling became a beloved figure, almost like Will Rogers. Uh, just people loved Ding Darling's humor and loved reading um, his very uh, biting political cartoons. In the pre-television era, um, the cartoonist had a lot of power in politics because people would read them in newspapers, and that's how they that's what people would talk about. In fact, most Americans would go right to the cartoon, which seemed to sum up the political situation. I would say Darling was our nation's best cartoonist, um, and he also happened to have a conservationist fervor in him. The issues he was concerned about, endangered species, human destruction of wildlife, protecting uh, marshes, prairies, wetlands, all these areas that are very vulnerable in the Midwest, his images really convey the conservation message, and it's timeless. I think his entire total when he was done was well over 16,000 cartoons. And if you think about that, that's a lot of cartoons. And it's one a day, and the amount of work that that takes to come up with those ideas and to be able to deliver them the way that he did was a, a phenomenal accomplishment. Darling drew, really, for half a century. He covered about everything you can think of. At least seven presidents, two world wars, Drew through the time when women got the vote. Drew through the early civil rights problems. And what's amazing is, to this day, those cartoons that he drew almost, in some cases, a century ago, they're just as true and important and the same problems we deal with today. <laughs>